Uh, welcome everyone as people continue to join in good to see you our our speaker is also logging in my name is Otieno Paul Peter and I'm happy to be your host I am part of the board for live your dream part of the people who started it uh, for the last four years we run this particular uh, we run this particular platform so uh, Power Monday was started by Live Your Dream in 2020. It was at the height of COVID and uh, people were gloomy and uh, 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 there, there, there was little hope uh, around. And so our initiative was to give people a reason to believe there is something good tomorrow. And uh, we started it up, we chose Monday. I know uh, there has been discussions about, oh, why Monday? We chose Monday because that is when most people start their week. So that you have a week that is full of energy, you go and grow. And so it's an, a, a CSR initiative of Live Your Dream, which is a capacity development organization. We discuss different topics almost in every facet of life and uh, largely those things that help uh, professionals and entrepreneurs to grow in their various endeavors and so you are welcome if you're here for the first time or for the nth time and uh, we continue to grow and uh, uh, build each other together so uh, as as ben is coming uh, uh, today, we are going to, uh, last week we talked about uh, resolving conflicts largely at the board, but almost at every level. We already have that in the YouTube. The people who may not have subscribed to our YouTube, uh, you can always do so. It's youtube.com slash at Power Monday. And uh, we always post these things by Wednesday of the week if we do it to we have a session on a Monday by Wednesday we endeavor to have it posted and thereafter we, we also have uh, uh, for people who always want to know more we also have uh, a page on uh, live your dream website uh, it's a page for power Monday you can always learn more and even see how you can partner with us upcoming is a meet and greet this month and so we expect to see all of you if not at least many of you so ben is a is a young man by the way uh, i've known him for probably about three years or something or more uh, when he was still in uh, uh, the university uh, he was just finishing his university and uh, he's, he's uh, quite informed, quite vast, a very good researcher in law and uh, currently uh, currently working with Triple uh, OK, uh, uh, which is one of the major law firms in this region. He's... Uh, he is very enthusiastic about this particular topic, image rights. But I know he's also talked to us about intellectual property. Uh, I've also invited him during uh, the time we were doing uh, women in digital business in order to help the ladies entrepreneurs understand how uh, they can participate they can uh, protect their businesses in the field of intellectual property and so we've worked with him in a number of pro projects and uh, he's quite uh, quite a, a sharp young man very informed and you will be able to like to hear him speak ben i hope you are ready we can uh, get started we were just waiting for you can you hear me good morning Good morning. All right. Thank you very much for the occasion. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope we are all good. Today, I want to speak about uh, a subject and an area of law that I'm very passionate about, the 
issues surrounding image rights. So I will be. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So I want to speak to you people about uh, the concept of image rights, what it entails. And in the remaining few minutes, I want to talk about five different things. Um, I want to talk about what image rights are all about. What, what is that? Uh, what are the economic exploitations and labor rights concerning image rights? What are the data protection issues and regulations surrounding image rights? And then the main thing, how do we maneuver the legal and ethical limits in using image rights of employees, especially, especially for MSMEs? Then maybe I'll touch about something surrounding intellectual property dilemma. Uh, is there an interconnectedness between image rights and intellectual property and where do they meet then um, if time will allow us i'll mention something about the ethical considerations that someone may want to have when uh, dealing with issues image rights in their particular businesses either as an employee or the employer or whichever kind of arrangement that you're having in that particular context so um image rights is not a very and uh, it's not a very common area in terms of uh, law not so many people have spoken about it uh, not before the the old debate around data protection issues so presently with the numerous data protection laws and the uh, the, the talk of the town today is the data protection issues Image rights are now coming as part of those uh, data protection uh, controversies and uh, issues. But uh, in my view, uh, there is a very sharp difference between image rights and data protection. And uh, that is where I want to talk about today. So why, why is the topic very relevant today? We are all in business. And I usually say that um, in any particular context, all we are doing on earth is to do business and that business is all about showing somebody that you have something valuable and you want them to to buy it so it's all about communicating value and selling that particular value so somebody is communicating somebody wants to sell for them to sell they have to communicate one of the major platforms where today you do the communication is the digital media the social media so social media is now becoming uh, that arena that people are using to communicate, to sell, to showcase the value. How the social media is built or is being built today is that it, it would be very boring and almost tasteless if it does not use images. So we are having Facebook competing with uh, Instagram in terms of who can do the best of videos, the best of uh, uh, photos. We have TikTok saying, look, I can make all Africans go white. So uh, everybody will be in light skin and they will like TikTok more, TikTok more than Instagram and all that. So it's all about the, 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 the visual, the visuals of objects and visuals of, uh, of human beings. And that takes me to the, to the next thing. So when we talk about images, we could be talking about the images of products or the images of human beings or the images of animals or all those. So my point of discussion when we're dealing with image rights, we are, we are majorly dealing, dealing with the aspect of human beings in images. Otherwise, when we're dealing with images of, of objects and all that, we go to another area of law called uh, the copyright uh, law issues. So that, that becomes a copyright. Who took the photo and um, who owns the rights to use it and or, or transfer the, those uh, rights that they own. So that is uh, the first difference that I want to communicate clearly that when we're talking about image rights here, we're talking about human beings. And that takes us away from issues to do with copyright. Another day, I'll be able to talk about the, how those interconnect and where exactly to draw the line. So once we have agreed that we are talking about human beings and that is the domain we are talking about regarding image rights, then we are now focusing largely on the authority to control and capture the use of human, uh, the images of human beings. That's all about image rights. That we should be able to control who takes our photos. 
And once they take them, we should be able to control how they're used. Um, now, what I'll be answering next is why. Why should uh, there be such a thing? And why should it concern you and your business as a medium, as, as, a, as, a, as a business, whether large or small or medium sized, or you as an individual? Why should it concern you? So as you're going to see, it must concern you because um, there are some legal pitfalls that can actually burden your, 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 your business in so many ways, whether through lawsuits, whether through uh, withdrawal of uh, the, the, the rights that some, some, some people gave you, and all that and all that as you're going to see. So this is a topic that is so relevant for businesses and individuals because, like I said, if somebody is going to be in digital marketing, which is the major thing today, then they must know uh, what image rights are all about and how to navigate uh, and maneuver those terrains. So I'll also be mentioning some particular uh, individuals or some professional uh, paths that involve a lot of issues to do with images and how they can uh, affect some good strategies to protect their brand integrity as individuals and even as a business. So that is that was too long for uh, an introduction, but I wanted you to understand what we what we mean when we say image rights. So where is the entire concept of image rights coming from? Um, the concept of image rights is coming from the Bill of Rights. What is the Bill of Rights? The Bill of Rights is the agreed uh, declaration in constitutions um, across the world. And that declaration, it, 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 it entails the rights and freedoms protected by law. And like I said, largely you find them in constitutions. So in Kenya, we have our Bill of Rights under chapter four of the constitution. The classicus Bill of Rights was found in the US constitution. So you will go to Uganda, you will find they have something around the Bill of Rights. You'll go to Tanzania, Bill of Rights, South Africa, Bill of Rights. Um, and all those, when you hear Bill of Rights, they're just protected uh, freedoms and rights. So when we say protected freedoms and rights, it means they are either explicitly mentioned and described or impliedly uh, guaranteed. It will now depend in the structuring of that particular country's constitution. So what are these uh, rights and freedoms that are usually protected under the Bill of Rights? They include civil and political rights. They include economic rights, underlying economic. They include social and cultural rights. They are heavy on equality and non-discrimination. Then there is the whole idea around personal freedoms. And if you want to know more about this, we just read the Bill of Rights. Is a, it's not so long, chapter four of the Kenyan constitution. So what the Bill of Rights does in summary is that it establishes those libas, li, liberties for individuals. And it comes up with a framework for fostering uh, respect for human dignity. And if you ask me, all that the Bill of Rights does in any constitution is to pro provide and promote respect for human dignity and freedoms by who by the government and among the citizens themselves so the bill of rights tells the government that this is the border that you should not cross at the same time it tells individuals that this is a border that you should not cross so it is both binding binding both the government and individuals among themselves as citizens so that is where the whole idea around the bill of rights uh, come from. And like I said, if we are to summarize, if somebody asks you what is the Bill of Rights and what does it do, is that it promotes respect for human dignity and freedoms. Now, the aspect of human dignity has never been defined in any constitution. Uh, as per my reading, as of now, I've never seen any constitution that defines dignity. Our Kenyan constitution and Article 28 just, just, just says right to dignity. So many constitutions. Nobody has ever defined it. So what is that dignity? It's a debate for another day. So there are four components of the Bill of Rights. And there, those are the four components of image rights, if you ask me. So those four things, uh, 
the issues to do with the privacy, the issues to do with the property, the issues to do with the dignity, and all that is concerned with autonomy of a person. So I want to mention just in passing that when we're talking about image rights, we are talking about uh, privacy. The right to privacy is a right established under our constitution, under Article uh, 33 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. It is the foundational basis, really, um, in protecting individuals' private lives from unauthorized exposure. Um, I know today, like we've seen in the in the present activities in the country, so many people have read their constitution, and I don't I don't want to bore you up uh, here reading what the constitution provides. You go to your Article Thirty Three, you'll be able to see everything that it says around image rights. I like saying three things under that uh, particular provision. Ben, you can adjust your video, Kidogo, so that we don't see only your... Yeah, yeah that one. Mm. Uh, can I be seen? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. Sorry, I was saying that... Um, I was saying that um, there are three things that I like saying around uh, Article 33. Um, Article 33. That there's, there's this bit. One thing that uh, I, will, I, want, I, will, I always like sharing around Article 33, there's Article 33 which provides for freedom of expression. And it says every person has a right, uh, has the right to freedom of expression, which includes so many things, uh, information, seeking and receiving it, the artistic creativity, academic freedom. Then there's the clause two of it, which speaks about the freedom of expression um, does not extend to propaganda, incitement, hate speech, uh, advocacy for hatred. Then there is the clause three of it that speaks to uh, the limitations. And it says that in the exercise of the right to freedom of expression, every person shall respect the right, the rights and reputation of others. That clause three of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 talking about uh, the you not allowed being not allowed not being allowed to injure the reputation of a person and to respect that reputation is a huge thing uh, when we're dealing with image rights because like I told you it's all about communication you're giving information about your business it is your freedom you have a freedom to make all that and you are going to be saying okay uh, my business does not communicate any propaganda. I'm not inciting anybody. It is not a hate speech. I'm not hating you. But there is the catch under Article uh, 3, Clause 3, I mean 33, Clause 3, or that speaks to respect that person's rights. Remember, this person's rights include every other right in the Constitution, including the right to property, then their reputation. So much as you may say that, no, this thing does not injure your reputation. I'm going to give you some examples. Somebody telling you, I've only used your, 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 your image to market my, to show my clients how to log into my platform. So how is that injuring your reputation? But somebody will be able to tell you that, well, maybe my reputation has, has not been injured, but did you respect my other rights, which include uh, my right to property? Why are you using it to make money? And things like those. Then we have the Article 31. Uh, Article 31 of the Constitution provides for the right to, to privacy expressly. And uh, it says um, you have a right uh, not to have your information relating to uh, your private affairs unnecessarily uh, revealed or and all that. So what private affairs is all about and all those are questions for another day. But I wanted to show you any time you want to get more about the constitutional underpinning of the issue of image rights, then you go to your Article 31 and Article 33, Clause 3. Having said that, I move to the next thing that I, I believe uh, concerns uh, image rights, and that is the right to property. The right to property... Um, is guaranteed and provided for under Article 40 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. 
And this right can only be limited by legislation, and that legislation can only limit the property, uh, I mean, that right to property to the extent that it allows for uh, compulsory acquisition of, of land. So the only thing that the government can acquire compulsorily in terms of the, your right to property is land. Um, things like intellectual property, like you're going to see the property that you own just by your creativity and your existence, Maybe like a right to, like a, like images, then nobody has that ability to limit it. So the notion of images as as being personal property has so many legal implications because we are seeing issues around ownership. And even if you see what I've read, uh, Article Thirty Three, Clause Three, providing for other rights, and these other rights include the right to property. So. If somebody is going to use express themselves, they're expressing their business, but they're using you as a are you speaking Paul? Okay, and and they're, and they're using you you in 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 the picture, then your right to property comes in. Then we go to the third component, which is the dignity. Uh, dignity is established under Article Right to Dignity is established under Article One Twenty. I mean, Article Twenty Eight of the Constitution of Kenya, and uh, the role of dignity is basically to safeguard individuals uh, from being demeaned. Uh, in the context of image rights, nobody should be able to use image, your, your images to demean you or to exploit that uh, image of yours in a particular context that you may not really like. So when we talk about dignity, like I said, I've never seen any constitution in the world that defines what dignity is all about. But researchers have begun writing on what really is uh, dignity, what does it mean? And tied to that closely is the debate around autonomy. What is autonomy? And in this context, when we talk about image rights, all we are saying is that somebody and everybody must have uh, autonomy over their their the, the images. I mean, you should be able to determine how you want your your life to go and how you want uh, the image of your life to go. Remember, like I told you, images is just uh, uh, an image, really. In terms of if we, in terms of a concept, it is a picture of something. So this can be a picture of your life. It can be a picture of your of your head. It can be a picture of your toe, and that is it. You must be able to have some sort of sort of self-determination um, as a person. What do you condone and what don't you condone in your um, image? So that yields to the concept of uh, the right of publicity. All that, if you have to summarize it and put it in one word, uh, you would put it as publicity. So image rights are all about publicity and limiting how public you may go. Article 31 provides for privacy, which is right uh, not to have your private information uh, and data just released unnecessarily and without your consent in that regard. So uh, publicity concerns two things. Um, the exclusive, I mean, getting published, let me put it so. So when we talk about publicity, I call it getting published, uh, getting communicated. Uh, somewhere that there is this Benson and people can see you. So you should be able to have uh, autonomy and determine by yourself and for yourself whether you really want to go public or not. So every individual, by virtue of being a human being, whether a child, an adult, of sound mind or not, you have an exclusive right. Underline the word exclusive. You have the exclusive right to the use of your images and uh, you can always limit their production and uh, distribution of, of, of your image. Um, this right is largely tied to personality so it means you cannot transfer uh, image rights. It is inalienable. You cannot really transfer it. It is not like land that you can transfer to somebody completely. Um, whether you can lease image an image you can, whether you can license an image is a question we are going to see shortly but it is it is it is a it is a, a personality thing it is a personality thing so you have exclusivity 
uh, over it. Then maybe the third thing I need to say around publicity is that image rights is all concerned with uh, the right to control the human being's um, image in terms of um, it being used commercially uh, in this context. Now that I'm speaking to businesses and individuals in business, what we are saying in image rights is that every person, your employee, yourself, you have um, autonomy over uh, autonomy and control over the use, whether commercial or non-commercial use of your image or like likeness, let me put it that way. So that includes your name, that includes your, your any other identifying character, uh, things like your signature and all that, especially when they are tied together with a particular thing or context. For example, I'll give you an example of, uh, let me say, I don't want to mention a name, but uh, imagine any, mention any serious musician in Kenya and their name. Most of our musicians have uh, some funny names that are not their original names given at birth. So that particular name, if you mention that name in a particular context and you maybe put an, a different image, an image different from that uh, name, so you mention, uh, you put the head of person A but you put the name of a person, a musician B, and you communicate a particular thing, you will already be in problems uh, because of the issues to do with the, uh, the, uh, how you're using the name and how you're using the, the, the images there. It's like I, what I'm trying to show you is that uh, there is always th th those interconnected uh, things that's, that, that, that will always come when you're dealing with uh, image rights. As we continue, please note that when we are talking about image rights, we have differentiated it from issues to do with copyright. And when we're talking about image rights, we're talking about the human being, a person, the human being, and how they should be able to control their autonomy and how they get public. So this is not a, just a, a, a theory that somebody is coming up with. These are things that have actually uh, caused serious controversies controversies which have actually been litigated in courts and it is a very niche area today and people are approaching courts for determination of their rights. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share with you, I think, three or four cases um, uh, where issues have, 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 have arisen regarding image rights. So in this case, in 2017, uh, this is a Kenyan case, the case of uh, Jessica Wanjiru. Um, the, the, the court had the opportunity to de define what uh, an image right uh, is in terms of its meaning. And the court said um, a, a, the image rights are about a person's right to commercialize aspects of his personality, such as the physical appearance, pictures, caricatures, signatures, personal logos, slogans, and the right to prevent other people from commercially making use of them. In this particular uh, case, the court was uh, tuned towards commercial bits of, of image rights, and I believe that was the center of the dispute in that case. So in those cases, we have seen courts dealing with the questions and controversies regarding image rights, what they are, and, uh, and uh, how the provisions of the Constitution that I just cited have been interpreted by the courts. So in that case, the, the, co the court tried to define what image rights are all about. Then in, the, in another case, uh, a case called the Proactive Sports Management Limited versus Rooney, a 2011 case. Um, this was not a Kenyan case, but the court defined image rights as the rights that individuals have over their personality that enables them to control the explo exploitation of their name or picture. The, the European uh, Court of Justice, I mean, the European Court of Human Rights has also had opportunity in so many cases to uh, define image rights and uh, handle controversies regarding the subject. And in a case called 
uh, von Hanover versus Germany in 2012, the court defined image rights as uh, a person's image that uh, constitutes their chief attributes of their personality, hence the right to the protection of one's image um, becoming an essential component of personal development. Another important thing there that the court said is the aspect of personal development. Now, the when we're dealing with image rights, uh, having established all that that pertains to image rights, what usually happens when those uh, particular aspects are violated is that we have three things. The person, the human being, loses their self-control of that uh, image right, the autonomy, the right to self-determination. If that is lost, somebody will be claiming that they are humiliated. If somebody is claiming the humiliation, then all they're saying is that maybe I have been stigmatized uh, because of all that. So these are the three main things that will be coming up when somebody is approaching your company or yourself, telling you that you violated their image rights. So basically what they're saying is that I'm under some stigma because of you sharing my image. I am feeling humiliated because of you sharing my image. How? You have uploaded my video that I, uh, that I used in uh, showing your clients how to log into your e-platforms. Now I've, I'm looking for business elsewhere and my potential employers are saying that I am actually employed in your company and me being employed in that company will be a bad competition to them. So the person is saying I'm humiliated in the, in the, in the space of employment. I'm, I'm no longer competitive enough. Um, when we say loss of control, which photo did you take where and how is it being used? You should be able to control everything that you do with each photo that you take. So any dispute that is going to arise when you're dealing with violation of image rights are going to concern those three things. So all that the law of image rights is concerned with is strategies for mitigating uh, these harms, which harms humiliation, stigma, and loss of control of, of image rights. Where well, I want to talk to you about uh, the economic exploitations and uh, labor rights when we are now dealing with um, uh, image rights. Now, when we talk about um, economic ex exploitations, we are simply saying the value that somebody is, is able or capable of deriving from the use of your image uh, is there that value. So we hear or we, we, we come across the concept of property under Article 40, the ownership that you have over the resources. So you as a person, you become a resource as a human being. Your head is a resource. Your, your maybe how you look, your appearance, your signature. So that becomes a resource. So how somebody uses it can be a question of how much they make in their company or how much they make you not to make as an individual. This is tied closely to the aspect of intellectual property. And uh, it's a debate for another day, but when we talk about inter intellectual property, we are simply saying um, we are protecting um, the rights that are not tangible, things that property that is not tangible, what you own in your head, what you own in terms of your creative poten potential, that becomes your intellectual property. So all that issues around uh, intellectual property um, also come in when you're dealing with image rights because you own your face just because you are born that way. You own how you look, not because you've uh, done anything, but maybe it is you, sorry. It is you. It is just you. Don't just use me uh, because I'm a resource uh, as I am. So intellectual property in image rights then is that protection that we have to give uh, over the ownership and control of the use of a person's likeness and how they how, how they look. Um, so like I said before, we have a lot of debate uh, surrounding data protection. Uh, regulations and compliance has been a major thing today. So data protection is uh, concerned with the with the protection of personal data. So what is personal data? In the bigger picture, personal data includes um, image, images. But I, I need to say that 
in the Data Protection Act, uh, there is no express mention of of uh, data as I mean of uh, images as being uh, personal data. Even in the international legal infrastructure, there is really no express and heavy uh, mention of, um, of of image rights in terms of uh, the data protection. But to the extent that we are talking about a person's uh, identity as an individual. Data protection is concerned with anything that is capable of, of identifying a person, anything capable of identifying a human being. So it is concerned with limiting and uh, the processing of, of that particular data. So when we're processing the image of a person, it becomes a personal data. And that is how image rights then tie with the issues around um, um, data protection. So we have seen several cases that have come uh, 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 discussing images within the context of uh, data protection. So uh, before the enactment of the Data Protection Act 2019, we had people approaching the courts, the high court in particular, uh, claiming violation of their, of, their, of, their, of their image rights. And um, one of those uh, cases was the case of Rukia Idris uh, versus in 2013. Now, in this case, um, the... Uh, murder hotels had used the photograph of, 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 of one of their employees, which was taken when that employee was a, was a mere trainee in that, in that firm to advertise their business. So at that time, that trainee had consented to the use of that image, but uh, somehow they just consented to the use of that image from 1997 to 1998. But after this uh, employee had left that particular organization, murder hotels continued to use that, um, uh, that uh, image without going back to, to Rukia to seek permission. So Rukia went to court and the court held that uh, murder hotels had violated her rights to privacy and dignity because they are marketing using her photos. She had never consented. Another case now uh, with the enactment of the data protection regulations and the data protection act, there's, there's all that debate whether we need to go to court to seek uh, uh, to, to, to challenge such uh, use of our images by uh, through petitions. So basically we are claiming violation of our constitutional rights or do we go within the framework of the data protection act? So, um, so far the obtaining uh, procedure is that one should be able to approach the Office of the Data Protection and complain uh, where they are claiming violation of their image rights. So there is the recent case. This, is, this case was determined... Uh, the case of uh, Cyrus Moniki versus Moja Expressway uh, Company. If it was not in May, it must have been in June. So in this case, uh, the complainant claimed that his former employer, underlying former employer, continued to use uh, his image in marketing without, without his permission after he had resigned from work. So um, what I want to summarize, I think my time is up, and I joined late. Paul, you can give, tell me how much time I have left so that I see what to... Uh, ideally, right now, we should be handling questions because we are supposed to end in seven minutes and then uh, we wrap it up in the remaining five minutes. But you, if you think there is uh, something down you want to mention, it's okay. Okay. Now, I think what I would say is that there are so many... You will see several cases where the courts have determined controversies around uh, image rights, where somebody is saying, okay, you consented to this and you gave me the, the, the rights to use your, your, your image in my company. Then employees, when they're leaving, they want to withdraw uh, such consent. So how do you deal with us as, as an employer? Will it be tenable as a business where, for example, you have a, a let me give an example of KRA. You look at KRA and how they teach people to 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 log into those their ITAX, for example. So, if your business um, is is one that requires such guidance, and you have somebody employed to do that, then this employee comes, they work for you for maybe three months. After three months, they they, they exit your company. They want you to um, they they withdraw consent and task you to pull down that particular video. It means you must have another person to do that. How are you going to deal with such situations? What is your business like? Uh, what is the formation? What, what are the, some of the issues that you're, you need to take care of 
in onboarding such employees to do such, uh, such, such a service. Remember we said um, image rights is something that is not transferable. You cannot transfer my face and put it to, to somebody else. But can we license it? Can, can, can you have it uh, uh, and use it for a particular while in which uh, sort of framework? So those are some of the things that uh, image rights enthusiasts and image rights uh, lawyers like myself do in terms of uh, contracting. What are some of the clauses that you need to do and all that and all that. So I had prepared a presentation down there. It's not, time is not on our side, but I have come up with what I call the best practices in obtaining... Uh, the consent for use of those images, especially in the context of employment. So in some, you will be talking about consent forms for, uh, for, for, for release and, and, and withdrawal and all that. So Paul, I think I need to take mm -hmm. questions that are more important than continuing yeah. on and on. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think we have uh, like five minutes. Uh, there are questions here from, but I wanted to first start by asking uh, what entails uh, injuring an image, because you said that, that uh, or, or, or reputation, injuring reputation using an image, <laughs> because, uh, but, but well, you alluded to that, answering that somebody can, uh, somebody can twist something, well, it wasn't injured, but maybe feeling humiliated. There is a question from Melvin. Are owners of CCTV cameras supposed to be licensed? Who protects my image captured in all malls and supermarkets from use or misuse? Um, who protects? Okay, okay. Can I answer them one by one or I'll be taking all of them? Yeah, yeah just that. Just that. Go on with that. Okay. Uh, who protects your the use of those images? Like we said, what the law is concerned with is really how are they going to, the, the commercial exploitation. So if you went into a supermarket or a mall and uh, you went shopping, then the following day you see them running advertisement using your photo. They're, they're showing how, how people can, can fill their trolley that much with just le 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 less money or little money. Then your image is portrayed there. Then it means they're making money because of your... Your, your image, and you will be able to go after them and say, look, I did not consent to myself being used as a marketer for your business. In terms of um, um, whether they should take those CCTV cameras or not, actually there have been uh, there have been cases. One I was reading, a case determined on 17th of June, where somebody was saying that uh, the apartment where they resided, um, there was a CCTV camera, and this CCTV camera shows everything he does when he, when he comes in and when he leaves and all that. And he was not comfortable with that. He approached the Data Protection Commissioner and um, there are all those principles that were highlighted there. The, the, the Commissioner said, look, there are limits as to when we're now dealing with security and you only need to show us that the thing has been exploited. So at that point, there is no exploitation. Actually, it is for your good and for the interest of the public that your image is taken. And we will only release it when we are now looking for you. I think I'll answer it that way. <laughs> okay. Confirm that the image rights are not terminated on the death of an individual. Disturbing images of dead protesters killed in the recent Mandamano are clearly in violation of these rights. So what would you comment on that? If an individual has watermarked a photo, or oh, a photo of an object with his or her name. Can another individual use that photo and give credit to the photographer? Is this in violation of their image rights, assuming they have no registered copyright? Uh, thank you very much. And that uh, speaks to the first thing that I, I, I endeavored to do, which was distinguishing copyrights uh, from image rights. Copyrights is all about images of any other object other than uh, those of human beings, but copyrights also may cut across uh, and uh, concern photos of, 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 of human beings. But when we're talking about image rights, we're saying my right to determine how my image is going to be used. Now, maybe not uh, to leave your question unanswered. When you, under copyright law, when you're taking, when you're using any photo that was taken by another person, and like you're saying, it has been watermarked, 
you all you need to do is uh, to uh, give credit in terms of uh, recognizing the original uh, person or photographer who took that photo and that is if they will they will be comfortable with that it is not enough just to to, to credit especially if you are using it if you are exploiting it or if it is too exploitative so that is a question around the domain of corporate law but when you're dealing with image rights uh, for example i think your question has brought to my head something i never think thought of before where for example i can say i've watermarked my my all my documents with my head so you can see my word for my, my word document but when you see it you also see benson and you see my face so it's my image so how you're going to use that thing will now uh, also begin to deal with issues of my image as a human being even as we also deal with copyright i think that's how i would answer that <laughs> okay interesting uh... But I, I think it should be something that can be proven. You see, if it's uh, watermarked and we can't identify that this is really your head, you better, you better be able to prove that this is your head and not my head. <laughs> no, if, if you... Okay, maybe I needed to mention this. Um, there is no, there is no uh, image uh, registry in Kenya. So we do not have a registry where we have a register of all heads and... Uh, names corresponding to each head but some countries yeah. have gone that direction where we are seeing people they're having registries for images so you go and register your image and uh, you can now be able to protect it through that registration whether it is a good idea i believe yes and because it is also capable it's very easy to do it so um but as of now maybe in the kenyan context if it if you cannot see me then it is not me so a head, if you cannot you see this head and say that this is Benson, then actually there's nothing to protect there. So that is yeah, why right. you will see that all these I've seen scenarios. <laughs> Sorry, I've seen scenarios where they distort some head. And you can clearly see that this is so and so, but it's dark, and there is no way you can say that. Uh, I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of image distortion on social media, uh, including cartoon, for example. Uh, and even those, uh, those, uh, what do we put? Yes, there are also cartoon on, on newspapers. Somebody is putting some uh, humor or satire and using somebody's image but it's distorted i don't know whether that is within this domain or or even uh, acted animations uh, and you can hear the voice they're using somebody's voice and and uh, sometimes the face is more or less towards the person in question um, yeah, it is within this particular domain, and it's all about uh, what I talked about, the right to publicity, the publicity. So, and uh, maybe I also needed to say this, images here, we are, uh, we human beings are just like land, the same, same way you are going to find that the value of land in Nairobi CBD may not be the same value of the same piece of, uh, same size when you, when you go to Upper Hill, or when you go to Gikomba now. So that is also featuring in, 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 in publicity, where, for example, you find these public figures, uh, there are limits to which uh, they can claim violation of their rights. These uh, influencers, their uh, extent to which they, the, the, their image, the, their claims can be limited. So there's no uniformity. I can put it that way. So mm -hmm. the, what, would, what do we see when we see this? So that is why how you're going to see those cartoons where somebody is giving a, a protruded belly with another thing, but you can say yeah, this belly is for person X, but this head is for another person. So I would put it that there are a lot of things that come into play when we are now talking about the publicity and when we're dealing with public figures, uh, there's all that uh, considerations that come with it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have run out of time. I'd like to call Odiambo, Odiambo Lale, are you able to give a vote of thanks and a happy year?